What? Sad man. We have an interesting guest tonight. You got him in the backstage now? Nothing, huh? All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition with Val and Grizzly. What's going on, Val? Hey, Chris. Partly sunny, 70 degrees here in Detroit. Nice and sunny in northern Kentucky. Hello, Crazy Witch. Hello. Well, welcome, everybody. A little running a little bit to late here today, mate. But, yeah, we're here. So, yeah. So Anything you new going on with you? I had an interesting conversation with uh, Barry Webster or last night, and Did I've, known, you? I've known Barry for for a little while. And we've anytime we get together, we have some d very very deep conversations that go anywhere from Sasquatch to spirituality to life itself in general and they're very very interesting very interesting and barry is supposed to join us tonight and if he does uh he's going to share with us some interesting things that he's been working on and barry by the way is from the uh res squatcher um research out in nebraska so um He's got some. He's got some very, very good insights on Bigfoot. Some things that I have never thought about. And uh, to be honest with you, uh, uh, I think it'd be a fun conversation with him when he comes in here. I think so, anything's fine. And happy Mother's Day to everybody out there in La La Land, by the way. Yes. So I want to throw that out there. I'm like my incense for the night. So, um, what did you do for your mother, for your mom, for well, your wife? Well, um, should I pray the Indian tribal tune for you? You know, That's I had it. all the family over here today, so uh -huh. we spent some time with with my wife and That's good. my uh, daughter and grandchildren and stuff. So, um. Yeah, it's yeah. Been, been quite interesting. I'm glad to hear that. So, interesting. I'm good. Glad. So what else has been cooking on? I've been seeing that you've been posting a lot. Well, you know, it, it goes in spurts with me because when I'm not researching or when I'm not posting, I can smell that incense from here. <laughs> yeah, it's very secretarial. Sacred I like that word, sacred have, have, have you ever burned uh, sweet grass in your studio? No, because every time I do that, everybody thinks I'm smoking reefer. Yeah. So, um, a friend of mine who is Ojibwa, he's been my writing partner for a long time. He used to um, he used to tell me about sweet grass, and he'd bring some back from his uh, uh, reservation in canada he had dual citizenship american and um canadian citizenship and he'd bring that back and tell me about it and, and uh it's supposed to be a neutralizing aroma from the sweet grass and it really does have a pretty cool scent to it yeah well i got tall man in my studio i've got shadow so i got to do a cleansing with all my dolls so yeah, I've got some issues, some poltergeist activity, and so yeah. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff I I, I want to stay away from. I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't like that stuff. But incidentally, you know, as a um, as an officer, I remember some pretty strange, bizarre things. It seems like it seems like we walk into 
when we go into people's homes. So, um, Don't step in the cat, dude. Don't step I, in the dog, dude. I never, um, I never thought that I was going to encounter these kind of things, but, and I rarely talk about them, but uh, there was one instance where uh, we were sent on a, on a, um, a rescue call very early in my career. And um, that's back when we had, I think it was back in early 1990s when we had the caller IDs. Everybody remembers the caller IDs. When you call, oh, yeah. call on that thing, that the, the, your phone number would come up and maybe whoever paid the bill, the person of residence, mm -hmm. their name would come up. And this lady was calling about her heart attack. She was having a heart attack. She needed rescue. So people were sent. I, in particular, was sent there with a partner. And um, she must have called two or three times in route to that location. And um, uh, the last time that she called, uh, I advised the uh, dispatcher that it, we were pulling up and that the rescue was was behind me. I seen him in the rear view, rear view mirror. And uh, we get to, we arrived at the location and my partner is asking me where the house is. And I said, well, it's right there. And he said, where? And I said, that parking lot, <laughs> that parking lot there, that's where the house used to be. And I says, I remember, I remember uh, six years ago, we were there for for a man that had a heart attack and died there. The house had subsequently uh, went into probate when the lady died, passed away, and the family, the surviving family, sold the property to the city. The city tore it down, bought the property, tore it down, sold it to the or gave it to the uh, school board. They demolished the home and made a parking lot there. So there we are sitting there with the rescue with the lights flashing. And they're asking the same thing. Where's the house at? It's right there, right where that parking lot is. It's no longer there. Right. The, question, the question is, how did that phone call come in? And why did that address and phone? And by the way, the phone number that was that was came up on the caller ID was the same phone number that came up six years previous when the man died of a heart attack. So in that instance, I told my partner to shut the lights off and stuff like that. And we're not going to talk about this anymore. Just forget about it. So you, you clear the call, you let the dispatcher know it's unfounded and everybody goes on their way. And we don't talk about that. It's just an anomaly that occurs. So strange things. Yes, strange, 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 strange things. So, but you encounter a lot of that stuff like that. You know, you do. People don't day. believe me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they actually do. Yes. Every day. So. You know, I've been, I've been, when I'm not on the Facebook group site, I uh, do a lot of reading and research. And um, then, and only then, I'll come back and post some, um, some threads and stuff. <clears throat> but I look at Facebook a lot like uh, a blog site. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> like a blog site. And, um, you know, whatever, whatever the moment moves me to, I'll, I'll write on it. Well, see, that's my problem. I'll get too many movements. Mm -hmm. So that's why I try not to write because once I start, I don't stop. Yeah, it, it gets like that sometimes, but yes, it does. Uh, there's, there's plenty of stuff. There's plenty of stuff to write about. And, um, recently I was doing the, the uh, postings with the short um, brief summaries and stuff, which are, which are kind of cool because um, in the past I've showed you the, <clears throat> showed you the, um, <clears throat> the worksheets, the databases that I use. <clears throat> right. And it's very easy to pull that out, extract that 
and place it there. So I could do I could do quite a few of those in a day. Oh yeah, yeah. So you uh, got all that caught up, or are you still far behind and catching all that up? No, I got I I entered uh, a thousand reports uh, last week. I'm starting over again, putting them together and and uh, sorting them. And um, I suspect by the end of the week, I'll have another thousand reports to put in there, which will take another couple of weeks, you know, another week to, to complete. And um, it's a lot of it's a lot of stuff, Chris. Well, it's a lot. That's a lot of information. It's a lot of information. So I ran across an old interview of mine from the BFRO, a guy mm -hmm. that 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 was attached to them. Mm -hmm. And I watched that interview that I performed on him. And I was like, wow. And I wish I could have go back and ask him some more questions because it was interesting how it all went down. But we talked about that before. I shouldn't have mentioned the organization's name. I do apologize. No, no ill respect or, or anything like that. You know, I know everybody loves to believe in fairies and in things that that does exist. So I believe in fairies. Do you believe in fairies? Not me. Oh, um, I do. <laughs> I've never seen one. I, I'm the type of person that I got to see something to to believe it. But. Yeah, I do. I believe in fairies. So crazy witch does. There's a lot of reports. Yeah, that's a lot of reports. Yeah, see, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of things out there about that just just does, does not add up. So now I'm supposed to go out in the woods today, and it's supposed to rain all day, and it, it didn't even rain a drop. Really? So, yeah, that yeah. sucks. Um, so how did that conversation go with BFRO? It was interesting. It was more of like, you know, you ask a question and it was like one of those ones were, okay, cop to cop. It was so full of crap that he didn't want to even talk to about the truth, about the question he was being answered. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so I, call it, I call it jousting. <laughs> You're well, I, call it, I call it a bullshit <laughs> meter, but I didn't want to say it on the air, but yeah. But it was interesting. So I, I talked to I talked to BFRO people from Michigan, mainly Michigan, and uh, some current and some former and stuff. But you know, the unspoken word, I guess, the agreement is, um, I don't ask them for information, and they won't share it. They won't ask me for information, and I don't share it. Um, because in my life, the door swings both ways. <clears throat> and um, I've, yeah. I've seen I've seen a lot of uh, I've heard a lot of uh, not so good things about that. And number one, I, I in particular am very funny about that. Number one. I don't. Uh, I don't agree with the idea that you pay to play. You pay money, a fee, to join an organization, and then somehow, somehow you're ordained an investigator, just like that. You go from Cub Scout to Boy Scout uh, with the exchange of money and paying the fee. If that's what they do, I don't know. I, I you know, I'm not going to slip anybody three hundred dollars. Hey, Jason. Uh, to to call myself an investigator i i'm not an investigator um to me uh in the real sense grizz uh you know that when you go into that into into our line of work it took matriculated study it took months and months of 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 study it took uh uh classroom work it took uh, books it took practical hands-on work <clears throat> field testing it took on-the-job training and after months of that 
after months of that, you still have to go back for uh, seminars and retraining and stuff like that before you're uh, considered a, uh, an investigator. So it comes with experience and skill and stuff, and it's not something that you, you buy. It's not something that you can purchase and, and call yourself and attach yourself a name to. Why? Wow, that's what they want. Well, that's, you know. I want a title. <laughs> that's that guy for 1995. I earned no. it. You know, in the Army. Or whatever it whatever amount it is. It was now, kind of you fun. know what this is, right? It looks like a, to me, it looks like a, uh, it looks like a roll of tape or something. Yeah. I yeah. take that out in the field. Pack you know why I take that out in the field? To collect uh, hair for a uh, There you go, ladies and gentlemen. See, now that is an that is a well adverse Dick Tracy investigator. Mm -hmm. So when you do find a track or a footprint, you can slowly impress that in an indention and see what you can retract out of that. See, or, and that's what we call detective work or a print. That's what we use for prints and stuff. Similar okay. to stuff. Yes. Like that. But um, yeah, I, I just uh, I just have funny feelings about calling yourself an investigator and, and like that. There's a uh, individual from from Michigan, a friend of mine, uh, who who I, I know I've said this before, who um, habituates and gifts Sasquatches. <clears throat> He's had BFRO out to his property before, and she came out there and seen with her own eyes something I, I think she wasn't expecting to see, and it scared her badly. And um, I've been invited to his property before, but um, I never went up there. Uh, never went up there, never took the opportunity to go up there. But um, he tells me that uh, one experience that he's had, I don't know what organization these people were with or who they were from, but he says that uh, while he had them on his property, he says he's got, he said, Val, he says, I got tons of, tons of, uh, tons of photos and documents and all kinds of stuff. He says, but he says, that's in my computer. When they came over, one of them was out there. There was two or three of them that came out. He says, one of them was outside flirting with my, my fiance, occupying her. And the other two were inside my house uh, with a flash drive, downloading all my, all my files and stuff. And he says, at that point, he says, I had enough with that. He says, I, I booted them off the property, booted them out of my house. I don't want anything else to do with them. Nothing. I don't want to share stuff with anybody. And that's the kind of bitter uh, response that you get, get from people and unscrupulous people. So, um, and I understand what he's saying. I, I wouldn't like that at all. But <clears throat> there, there was something that I posted today similar to that where um, – you know, I told him, I, I, I told the, uh, the individual, I know who he is, but I says, you know, in, in, in the Bigfoot community, there's, there's lots and lots of people. Some are very, very good people. Some are, you know, you, you pick and choose. I, myself, I myself like sobriety. And uh, I, I, when I go out, I, I don't go out to party. I don't go out to, to be reckless or anything like that. It's just, it's a fun time to be with people. It's a fun, fun time to, to share camaraderie with people. To me, that's the joy of going out for hikes and stuff, exploring. And, and um, hopefully you find something interesting. But uh, the the uh, infighting and all that kind of stuff is it's it's not cool. I, I don't like that. I don't like the bickering, the fighting, and all that kind of stuff. Hello there, Jeremiah. 
Um, yeah, I don't like that. I don't like it. I've seen enough of it in my lifetime. I don't. I don't need to to be retired and, and experience that stuff again. I just don't like it. It's not cool, not at all. So I stay away from that. And and if you choose to come on to my group site and joust with profanities and stuff like that amongst yourself. I, I don't have any use for that. I don't have any tolerance for that. Um, you know, I, I enjoy intelligent people, intelligent conversations, and uh, I just don't have any patience for the other stuff. The, the yeah. games and stuff like that. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I do. Exactly. I had one guy on, on, on one of my shows, and, and ladies and gentlemen, forgive me because I do I do quite a few. That said that he traveled over two hours to meet this BFRO uh, person. And they had it at a town hall. We see that they do on TV or a firehouse. It was a town hall. And the first words out of this guy's mouth was, and I repeat, ladies and gentlemen, I do not believe in Bigfoot. Cool. Now, I would have had a stroke right then and there. I would have kicked him off the stage and been like, hey, it's my show now. You're off. You are out of here. And people paid money to come see this person. Mm -hmm. People traveled <laughs> hours. People got hotel rooms. People, I mean, why would you come out and say that? I mean, a lot of people got upset over that. I would have been one of them. A lot of them were in shock, didn't know what to do. I know what I would have done. I would have kicked them off stage and been like, it's my show now. Now we're here to talk about Bigfoot or Sasquatch, and that's what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. And you are out of here. See that door? Mm -hmm. Don't let it hit you in the rear. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Now, can you believe that? Now, what would your national, your first initial response would have been if somebody would have told you that coming up on stage? Irrespective of the organization that they represent, it could happen anywhere, anytime with anybody. But I also understand that that uh, from an operative uh, point of view, coming from a uh, individual that's worked a lot and undercover, operations and stuff like that um think about this there's yes, not so a our better... own live shows do have closed caption and yes they do down the bottom <laughs> there's there's not a better place to uh infiltrate and and if you want to know about bigfoots where would you go you'd go to the biggest the most visual the most uh pronounced groups on Facebook, social media, and that's where you would set up to take your notes, to take the uh, names and, and follow that up. I mean, if, if I was doing an operation, that's exactly what I would do. And you wouldn't know. And, and I think that, I think that, uh, the more you're in this business, the more you will know that uh and we talk about and i talk about trolls and and stuff like that on these on these uh, group sites and stuff like that even in your comments you'll see it um people are paid to to cause havoc in in these groups and these are these are uh, provocateurs these are some of them are paid pro provocateurs they're there to disrupt and um obfuscate you know, uh, whatever the uh, conversation is, but they're also there to collect information. That's what they do. That's subterfuge. That's deception. That's what deception is. And and I recognize that. And I, you know, it is what it is. It comes with the, uh, it comes with the, uh, the lay of the land here. But you're so, telling me you would have sat out in that audience and, and took and, and taken that? No, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be happy with that, especially if I paid a fee to come in there to listen to somebody. And drove over two hours? No, no. One way? I would not I would not be happy, Chris. I would not ha be happy at all. No. no I thought no. the guy was pulling my leg when he first told me. 
but this guy's credible. Mm -hmm. He said he he was upset. Mm -hmm. I was like, upset is not the term for me. But let me just say this. If, if you get deep into this topic subject, look at the history. Look at the history and you'll notice you'll notice a lot of people involved in this in this game, this Bigfoot game. There's there's people there's people that have died in mysterious plane crashes involved in this in this kind of stuff. There's people uh, that blatantly wore uh, caps and stuff identifying uh, uh, some uh, ABC agency. And there's also uh, in some of the early history of Bigfootery, and I'm talking about going back to the the days of um, Patterson and Gimlin. I'm not saying that these guys were involved in that, but I'm saying back in that day, <clears throat> there's well-known uh, uh, books out there of people uh, involved in unsavory types. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, um, I'm talking about, uh, underworld people involved in this stuff. So why not, why, you know, why not, uh, um, accept and grasp the idea of other people being involved in this? They want to know too. And I believe they do. It's just the way it is. It's it's part and parcel of, of the uh, landscape that we're in. So it's sad. It really is sad. Uh, there's a there's a guy. If, if in in case your listening audience wants to know if they want to look further and deeper into this, there's there there was an individual. Uh, what was his name? Oh, I forget. I forget right now what his name is, but uh, he had he had some breaking news. He wanted he wanted to set up a press conference, and uh, he was calling a press conference on on some information that just broke that he was going to share with the world and stuff. And and um, he had to fly from one point to another, and in doing so, the the plane explodes, and some of the stuff that I read about the plane crash, uh, it was said that, uh, you know, there's no way that that plane could have uh, faltered and, and, and fell apart like that without, without some external um, help. So uh, it is what it is. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's a murky, dark, deep, topic and um it is what it is so standing stones want to know what do you think about the mat in saint helens and supposed to the retrieval of all the dead bodies flowing around in army choppers well I, i've read the same thing and um back in the early um the early uh track record um by um Ray uh, Crow, uh, there was reports there that indeed uh, that was the case. I don't know how many uh, bodies, burned bodies, dead bodies they retrieved, but there were also uh, reports of um, first responders at the time uh, being told, you know, do not talk about this. Do not talk about this. Mum's the word. But of course, humans as they are, you know, they'll talk about this at some point. Um, and, and, you know, it says a lot about human beings. <clears throat> it sounds a lot like, I mean, it's, it's really, think about human beings. We are what we are. And it doesn't matter how tight the censorship is, you're still going to find out somebody is going to say something. Somebody's going to clear their conscience. Similar to the way that I think, if you've ever read the Miller documents, something 
something to that to that aspect. Um, somebody is on their deathbed, and one of the last things that that person wants to talk about to clear their conscience is whatever whatever uh, is bothering them or has bothered them for many many years, and that's what they do. They take that opportunity to clear, clear themselves and, and uh, clear their accounts. I mean, if if you were going to die, wouldn't you want to do that? Oh, clear absolutely. Your, clear your conscience and and say it all, and you don't have to worry about retribution or punishment or anything. You just let it go, let it rip. But on the other hand, uh, with that said about uh, Mount St. Helens in particular, there are reports that correlate a rise, a sharp rise in, in sightings and reports with natural disasters like that. Uh, the volcano was, was kind of exceptional. The uh, subsequent earth, uh, earthquakes and tremors cause uh, all kinds of living creatures to, to flee for safety. And um, there are a lot of reports of uh, Sasquatches and deer and everything else running for, for safety through people's yards, clogging the roads, not caring who sees them. And uh, that is evident by, by some of these reports from the 1980s too. So interesting. Mm -hmm. And if, and I do not know why that's not kicking in. But, anyways, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back and I'll figure out what's going on with that audio again. like it's muted it don't sound right yeah it does sound like it's muted just a little bit hmm let me hit one button here see if i can figure out what it's going on here I don't know. That's strange, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another edition from. Uh, is it going to rain over there? Western Bigfoot Investigations LLC. Yes. Thank you, Don Laden. Yeah. So it was kind of strange, ladies and gentlemen. I can tell you that much. So very interesting. Oh, I know why my computer is dying. I forgot to plug it in. <gasps> Shame on me. <laughs> Shame on me. See, you're not supposed to keep things plugged in because it's supposed to ruin the battery life, I was told. I just use the desktop. I've, I've used desktops for a long time. I've used, I've had bad experiences with laptops in college and uh, never That's went back to them. Good. Hmm. Never went back to them. Interesting. But Luna, welcome to the show. Happy Mother's Day to you, too. I hope everybody's doing well. Laurel, yes. Happy Mother's Day to all the Sasquatch moms out there as well. Crazy Witch, 
need to put the trash out for the morning. Uh, oh, I thought you said morning elk. I was like, well, your elk's going through your trash. How nice. All right, Standing Stones will save your seat. Crazy Witch. Hi, Luna. But no, it is interesting because, you know, anytime that we have natural disasters and stuff, we do hear alleged incidents with creatures that does not exist that the government carries away. So it's very interesting. You know, it makes you wonder. It seems like we get a lot of hurricanes and tornadoes and stuff like that. Um, there are numbers of reports of uh, sightings and encounters prior to and, and after uh, hurricanes and and uh, tornadoes and stuff. And of course, in this database, uh, that's one of the things that I that I look for and track as well. So it, it's quite interesting. Laura wants to know what we're doing. Well, I was trying to figure out why the music wasn't playing right, but uh, actually anything and all goes, we're waiting on our guests, but uh, anything y'all want to talk about, we're talking about, we're talking about uh, Mount St. Helens. And allegedly, the creatures that were being carrying off by our government and our civilians and our military was like, mum's the word. And it actually happened in the forest fires in Midwest back 10 or 12 years ago when the firefighters were coming across these creatures and they didn't know what they were and they were trying to run their first aid and they were like, oh, they're not human. They're like, no, they're not human. Well, what do we do? And the government showed up and like, you don't do a damn thing. We're taking them. And they hauled them off. So, I mean, what are you supposed to do on that? I mean, why does the government show up? I mean, how do they know? Do they got, like, trackers on these things? I mean, somebody has to get the word out that, that, they're, that they found them before the government shows up. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how quick they respond. Yes, Laurel, once again, technical difficulties. Like always, it's my dolls. Uh, don't ask Val about that. Val does not like Zuzu like that. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it is. It's why is it? And then, you know, everybody's like, oh, we need a body. I'm like, you're never going to get a body because once you drop one, which I know that they do bleed, mm -hmm. I know that you can kill them. Two things are going to happen. Either you're not going to make it out alive because they're going to strip you to shreds because they do protect themselves and their kind. But before you get out of that woods, there's already going to be a government or agency or some type of agency in that woods confiscating everything that you already have and making threats to you before you even out of that woods. So I'm just telling you, that's a fact. So, yes. I always said I cut off a hand and bury it real quick. Somebody somebody posted uh, something a while back about uh, what they would do uh, if they ever had a body, and and basically their uh, assessment was they would dismember it and and put a piece over here, put a piece over there contact so-and-so you know what there's uh, still no way no cadaver dogs i'm not uh, you know i to me that's creepy anyway uh, you know i'm not doing it there was a gentleman that uh, you had as a, as a guest a while back and he explained pretty uh concisely what occurred with him, the experience that, that he underwent as a young kid when his neighbors did something similar to that. And uh, to this day, I, I nod my head over, over some of the things that he said. In that case, in Michigan, um, he was visited. He was visited. Uh, the thing that, that he befriended went next door down the road and um, 
and uh, broke into a house and and was was shot. It fled the house, went across the road, and and apparently died uh, in a creek beyond a cord field. The neighbors went out and retrieved us and brought it home and did their own um, autopsy and took pictures. You know, the old Polaroid pictures? Yes, yes. Yeah. Took pictures of that. And according to him, the kids took those pictures to school for show and tell the very, <laughs> the very next day. And that is, that is crazy. That is crazy. That is when uh, he says that he rode the bus home in this quiet, sleepy uh, farming town. He rode the bus home and he seen all these people in his yard when he, when the bus arrived home from school, there were people uh, dressed in suits and, and whatever they had on their biohazard suits. They were looking on the ground. They were picking stuff up. They were all over the place in the barns, outside the barns. And um, as soon as he got off the bus, he was encountered by three men who were Native American men. And they asked him to come in the house. There he went in the house. His mom and dad were sat there quietly looking at him. At that point, uh, the lead uh, individual, the spokesperson of that group, asked this this young boy, where is the body? We know, we know that you guys have a body here someplace. Where is it? They were they were told, they were notified by somebody. And um, as he says, um, they were, the boy was scared to death. Um, they were playing good guy, bad guy with him. And at some point, uh, um, he says that there were, I don't know, three, four, five National Guardsmen that accompanied him. And think about that. If that's true, how intimidating that would be to a young boy to see that uh, you're being you're being talked to like that in front of your parents. Your parents are are mum. They're quiet. They're silent. And they've got some soldiers there. And they have some suits there. And um, at some point, the spokesman tells somebody to go out in the trunk and bring his briefcase in and at which point the national guardsmen protest they said it's that's that's not their job description we're not going to be a party to this whatever it was so there was some more uh, arm twisting metaphorically i don't think physically but metaphorically and at some point, uh, <clears throat> these men knew that <clears throat> that uh, the body was not there on that property. It was down the road, and uh, they eventually found it. But according to him, according to the boy, now a man, he says that uh, he's seen a picture that that made him believe that Bigfoot had two hearts, two hearts. And that <clears throat> whoever took the pictures, when they took the pictures, they lifted up the gums and uh, the juvenile Sasquatch that was killed, <coughs> excuse me, had um, uh, long canines that you don't see unless that mouth is opened up, you know, much like a snake. A snake opens up that mouth, it disjoints its mouth to take on a large... Uh, um, pray, and um, that's the that's the thought that I got. But in any event, uh, as interesting as that was, um, the thought of something having two hearts would that explain the speed and the endurance that these things have? 
if they can run 35 miles an hour, which is which is probably the average of what I see these reports showing, 35 miles. Some people say 70, but you know, to me that sounds like exaggeration. But with two hearts, uh, think about that. You could swim a whole long distance with two hearts. You could run a long distance quite fast with two hearts, couldn't you? Yeah, you sure could. If that was true. Somebody recently says that, that you know, as human beings, me and you, everybody else, we have double helix. The helix is the physical structure described, used in describing our physical DNA. You and me both, we have double helix, those squiggly lines that go around. And that's what is used to describe our uh, Bluetooth disconnected physical DNA. What was that, Chris? Uh, disconnecting my devices, see if I can resync them to make sure the music oh, okay. comes back. Okay. Yeah. Some more bugs and stuff. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> So uh, there is some thought out there. Think about this now. This is quite interesting when you're speaking about Bigfoots. Um, there's some thought out there that believes that some people, human beings, have triple helixes. Triple, meaning the DNA, their DNA isn't exactly like what we would think, double helix. Meaning... Uh, like Bigfoot is supposed to have originated from a, another planetary planetary source before they before they arrived here in this world, and um, they point their fingers. The same people that that uh, discuss this are the people that point to indigo children. They point to indigo children, meaning people born in the 50s on up into the generations that we have now are a little bit different than children born in the 40s or the 30s or the 20s. They're a little more, they're a little more spiritual. They're a little more intuitive. Um, mm -hmm. And this gets into all of the Bigfootery and stuff like that, because the guest that we're supposed to have here tonight, uh, Barry, we talked about infrasound. We've we've talked about this in the past. In his language, in the Omaha language, they use the word kube as uh, infrasound. And to me, and to them. If I understood correctly, um, that is to mean uh, sacred. Uh, that's a sacred uh, gift that they have. And when we're talking about double helix and triple helix, indigo children, uh, a lot of these people say that these, these indigo children of the 50s on up are, are pretty special people. They have, they have uh, intuitive thoughts and, and abilities that they don't even know. They don't even understand. So it's it's pretty it's pretty interesting stuff. And like my question is Val, is what are their purpose here? The Bigfoots, the Sasquatch. Yes. What are their purpose? I don't, I don't know. I can't answer that, Riz. I, I don't know. Uh, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, I toy around with this because um, I pointed out many, many times early on when I, when I ventured into social media that uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of reports that point to Sasquatches emulating people. And there's and there's some basis for that. There's some basis for that. Uh, when I say emulating, I mean 
some of these some of these things and i call them things because i really don't know they're not human they're not primate they're something they're an enigma some place caught in the middle we got our music fixed by the way sorry so, Jeremiah, do you do not have Facebook Messenger? I want you to get through. I want this to be awesome for you. I want to know what's on your mind. I want to hear what you got to say. You got Facebook Messenger? I know everybody's got Facebook Messenger. If you, you have Facebook, that. you got to have Messenger. It's, it's part and parcel. Laura, you got to go. You got to catch the next show. It's entirely Curtis and Leaves like an elephant lady. What? Uh, oh, elegant lady. I got to go. Hope to catch the next show. I hope you do catch the next show. Yes. Norma. That's a good question, Grizz. No, I don't. Hmm. Well, I will tell you what, Jeremiah Sutton. My phone calls are being monitored. Mine are being recorded. So what the hell? You want to come on the show... And you want to talk? There it is. Call me up. I'll put you on the show. Now, where's the phone that that rings to? Hold on. It's around here somewhere. All right. I got the phone. There you go, Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Nah, nah, nah. Was a good friend of mine. All right. I got the phone in my hand. All you got to do is dial the number. And I will hold it underneath my microphone so everybody shall hear your conversation. So, I got the phone right here, right below the mic. And yes, Val, I need to get my device hooked up. I don't know why I do not have it hooked up. There it is right here, where I can take phone calls on the air. See, ladies and gentlemen, there it is. I just got to hook it up. There you go, Jeremiah. There's the phone number. It's not a one nine hundred number. So let's see here. We'll do it the old fashioned way. And I'll hook this up later tonight. That way next time somebody wants to call. There you go, Jeremiah. Can I can I borrow on Facebook? No, I'll give you my phone number. Call it. Unless you want to show your face, I'll put you on. I'll put you on live. Don't bother me at all. I'm just trying to get you on the air. I can borrow on Facebook. And all you got to do, if you're going to do it on Facebook, is hit Grizzly Chris. Send me a PM, and I'll send you the link. And that way, I can get you right up here with us, and you can say anything you want and ask any questions you want, or you can call that 502 number. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting a phone call. Hello? Hey, hey. Yes, sir. All right, I'm, I guess I made it through. Yeah, you're on the air. You're on uh, rolling the bones and riding the canes with Grizzly and Val. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing good, just nervous. Why are you nervous for? Don't be nervous. We're having a good time. Yeah. Yeah, that's why, why I'm here. So just want to be a part of it. Well, hey, we're glad you're a part of it. So what's going on with you? Uh, not much. Uh, I had two questions on my mind uh, uh, for the past month. Uh, one was about, uh, what was it, uh, with, with Val? And his um, his database um, with the uh, abandoned abandoned structures that got brought up, mm -hmm. and uh, the railroad, um, the the box car. So, so I was curious. I was going to try to email them and uh, just see if you know if there were missing people correlated with. Uh, um with uh people who work for the railroad now i will say this not trying to speak in the behalf of al in any shape way manner or form now i did a dog man show the other day from the director of the state of california 
and he did an and he did a uh, an investigation in downtown L.A. And I was like, well, that's kind of convenient because how the homeless people you have down there, how in the hell do you keep track of who disappears and who doesn't? Mm -hmm. So who keeps track of that? Nobody. There ain't a damn soul. And nobody gives a rat's ass about who disappears if you're homeless. Unless you're a politician, got money, or you're a different ethnic background, got ties to something, or you got beat up by the police or something like that, or... See, you see where I'm going with it? Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's quite a few uh, serial killers running around there, too. I, I guarantee you there is. I guarantee you probably, beyond a reasonable doubt, with the totality of circumstances, too, that there's probably uh, body organs that are being harvesting in certain locations of the United States because of the homeless populations, because of the rich people. I can probably say that with... Uh, out any uncertainty hello barry i'll get you right on backstage there so barry just signed on so yeah so i do believe in all that i do i'm i'm right there with you so i learned a lot of things though jeremiah yeah i learned that when it comes to city governments townships county whatever they all get funded by what grants right money from the government right now for you to get funded by these so-called entities from the united states you got to have certain numbers in line now when we're talking about numbers we're talking about crime statistics now we know that there are some states and some jurisdictions and some i better stop where i'm there that will skew those numbers to get more money Ain't that right, Val? Yeah, I, I agree, uh, Chris. I so really that agree. actually does happen. So when we go out there and look at the FBI stats on serial killers, we go out there and look at the national parks, but they do not count anybody missing or murdered in national parks, uh, and, unless, unless that's changed, ladies and gentlemen. They do not keep track of that. Now, they may have incidents of people gone missing, where they had to call out search parties, but they never say, well, nah, we had in the past 10 years, over 3,433 people missing and only recovered only four bodies. No, we don't have that kind of detailed information, no. So I, I agree with you on that. So yes, you are on to something with that. I do agree. Okay. Well, uh, I hope I didn't go off a topic or anything no. like that. And um, I don't know if Val can hear me or not. Oh, so, Val yeah, can uh, hear you. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, um, something else uh, that I, I wanted to ask that um, that I was looking up yesterday. I was watching a bunch of uh, the uh, Rolling Rolling uh, Rolling the Bones uh, videos, and I was trying to find where uh, where uh, I want to say it was discussed that um being careful about uh the uh women women hygiene products oh in the yes. garbage can and uh certain hunters using it uh for for baiting yes they do not used um, to be one of them that's something i didn't know yes i did uh but that was uh the reason why i was on that track was because that uh it was leading me to a uh um the possibility of a a peeping tom squatch uh oh not uh, not for me but re uh recently i don't know it's been been about two weeks there's uh there was a pod there's a podcast called um it's uh uh it's vigilance elite uh it's sean ryan's show has uh military people on there and they had a guy on there named grant hill and he had he talked about being terrorized when he was a kid and it sounded so much like a stereotypical uh uh peeping tom tom squatch you know and i was just amazed by it and i brought it up to a uh a, uh, a friend of mine who's on a website I belong to, 
Um, and she started talking because she lives in Texas or she lived in Texas. And she, when she saw the video, uh, she started talking about uh, that her sister was having problems uh, with that. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to say any more about that because, you know, I don't want to say nothing out of the way. No, no, you're not the only one. You'd be surprised how many people are sitting back going, you know what? He's telling the truth. I know. I'm in the same boat. My neighbor's in the same boat. Mm -hmm. Well, if, what, you know, I don't know which is more disturbing, somebody looking in your window or, you know, um, something big and hairy looking in your window. Yeah. J Jeremiah, this is this is Val. Uh, a lot of people call me Gumshoe um, Guy. What is uh, it? I, I got the volume turned down on my. Or she lived in Texas, and she and she saw the video. Oh, uh, hold on for a second. Let he's me. Gonna, uh, he's got to turn down his his. Show. Hold on. Let me. Uh, there we go. Now you can talk. Now I got you up and where you got. Now can you hear everything now? Well, I can I can hear you, but you know this is just a. Now you should uh, be able to hear Val. Val, say something. Hello, hello. Jeremiah. I, I can, yeah, I can hear him. Yeah, I got you. I got you in my ear now, so that's why. Yeah, if you can't hear me now, you can hear you can hear my reply after uh, after the show is recorded. A couple things here. Uh, you mentioned I have, abandoned. I appreciate y'all. Well. I can. I, I don't mean to talk over you, Val, because I'm still. It's it's still hard to hear. And uh... yeah, he'll be able to hear once this is recorded. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't. I don't want to use up all y'all's time, but I appreciate uh, appreciate y'all letting letting me on. And maybe I might be a little bit more prepared next time. Well, next time I have my uh, phone system set up to where uh, you can call in and you all, you, you'll you be live on the whole system instead of just through my ear, earpiece and microphone. So. Cool. cool. Yes, sir. I, I, I really like, you know, uh, what I've been seeing, you know, just, mm -hmm. you know, y'all's attitude as far as, you know, um, uh, not, not trying to be, um, what is it? Uh, you, the whole expert narrative, you know, and I, and I'm sick of the, you know, uh, the fighting and and boo boo hooing and pooing on other other people's experience. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we totally agree with you on that. I I assure you that we're uh, we know how it is. We're not that way. Uh, we we take things at a different approach. So that's that's where we stand and. And we greatly appreciate you. Next time you call in, I'll have everything set up. It's just two wires, so I'll get that. I'll get that worked out for us. Awesome. Well, uh, I'll let y'all go, and um, you know, to all the 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 ladies on uh, on the show, uh, Happy Mother's Day, and uh, um, talk to you soon. All right. Thank you, everybody. You have a good hey, one, sir. You too. All right. Bye bye. <laughs> Very nice oh, guy, Jeremiah. Very nice guy. Jeremiah Sutton, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so, backstage. Barry, come on in. And as we're talking, Barry, welcome to the show. We're going to play some Hollywood Squares here. Yeah, <laughs> Barry. So we kind of did it the old-fashioned way, bringing him on the show, because I didn't have my wires plugged in. But that's all right. Can you hear us okay, Barry? I sure can. Hi, Barry. Uh, hey, how you doing, Val? Wonderful. Wonderful. So, Barry, uh, before we get started, would you take a moment and share with the people, introduce yourself and, and share with the people who you are, what you rep represent. And uh, I hear you're working on some some project and stuff. If you want to share that with us, that's cool. Um, and later on, towards the end of the show, if you got a plug for your group site and uh, whatever books or anything that you have, you can do that as well. But the floor is yours. The table's yours. Awesome. Awesome. Again, it's an honor to be here. Um, thank you for having me on. Um, 
My name is Barry Webster. Um, I'm the co-founder of uh, Red Squatching Research. Uh, we're a Native American, um, uh, I guess, for quote unquote, you know, we're uh, Sitonga slash Sasquatch or Bigfoot, however you want to interpret that in the non-Native world. Uh, we're located in Northeast Nebraska. I got a, uh, I got just an outstanding team of, of experts um, with years of, of experience, and uh, I'm just so grateful to be a part of that. You know, be a, be the leader of our team, and and again, um, uh, if if I if I miss that i i'm also a member of the omaha tribe of nebraska a proud member i should say so mm -hmm. again just, just glad to be here thank thanks for again having me i i'm i'm uh awed and re, you know inspired by your your work barry you know that we've had some very very long deep conversations and um I'm just amazed at some of the stuff that you've been involved in. Um, what is your What is your most memorable uh, Sasquatch ex experience out there? Well, <clears throat> let me see. Um, I think I think there's there's probably a top five. Let me let me start with that. My, my first one, boy, I'll tell you what, um, got me a little dumbfounded. Let me, let me think real quick here if I can. If I can. What is, what, uh, Barry, excuse me, but what does Stevie Wonder mean to you? Wow. You've done a little bit of homework, huh, Val? <laughs> You're the man. Well, Stevie Wonder, let me, let me just tell you a little bit about him. He's, uh. I would say at least nine foot tall. Um, I believe he's the son of, of Ishage. Uh, Ishage is, a, is a, what we know and, and considered the, uh, the leader of, of all of them, so to speak. But more specifically, he'd be the father of Stevie Wonder. And um, uh, every bit... And, and this may sound like I'm cheating a little bit, but the, the beef jerky were the, the strangly kind of hair, but more, uh, boy, I, I'd never, never thought I'd ever say this, but this is my best description. Stevie Wonder is, 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 uh, <laughs> uh, I would, I, again, just, just an awesome being, but well, I'll tell you what, very, very human-like. Um, the facial features, the the LED lighting that was on his chest at the time. Uh, boy, he he was a, the alpha male of all alpha males. He was a handsome handsome Sitonga or Bigfoot. Uh, just an amazing uh, presence, um, and obviously to be face to face with him, that you know. That still blows my mind today, Val. So if Chris and I went out there, uh, Barry, would we would we experience the same um, feeling that you have when you go out there and encounter these things? Yeah, I, I, I can only speak, again, from my own experience, but I, I would have to say, you know, um, the approach... And, and what separates us, I think, and, and I'm going to just say it, I think a lot of people followed, you know, which, which is a good thing. You know, um, our approach is, is through a, a traditional spiritual approach, which mm -hmm. we think we, we, we have reconnected as our ancestors have. And to, to answer your question specifically, um, I, I think you would, you know, I mean, Outside of being a a uh, a computer YouTube researcher, you know, you, you just have to get down there and get 
I, I like this little saying, the boots on the ground. Um, mm -hmm. We usually have, um, we've had uh, camp out, overnight camp outs. And, you know, I, I think you would. You would have your own unique experience based on what, what, what we believe is your own uh, uh, spiritual level. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, Val. Yes, yes. <clears throat> now, Barry, do all and I, I and forgive me for the for the the use of words but do a lot of native americans native indians uh experience the same um uh interaction with sasquatch i mean in generalities in terms of generalities is it this is the feeling the same mutual across different lands, different people, different groups, or are there differences in the way that uh, Sasquatch and uh, Tsunga is, is um, recognized? Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I think so. You know, I, I, um, I don't, no, no offense, but I don't, I don't follow a lot of people, you mm -hmm. know, and that's no mm -hmm. disrespect to nobody. You know, I, Mm -hmm. But I, the the stories all sound the same. What I what I do here, mm -hmm. and and this may sound like I'm I'm putting myself out there, but um, uh, Barry, well, I'm sorry, I got there's a question here. Were you on Alaska Killer Bigfoot? Uh, no, I wasn't, uh, <laughs> Lady Wolf. Um, but um, I I think I think some of it, you know. So the bluff charge, so I, I don't, again, you know, the, 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 the white, the white world or the society has, has got their label on bluff charge and all those things. I, you know, all those sound familiar, but I, I, I will say this though, that, that the, the face to face, obviously what separates us. And, and, and I know I keep harping it on that, but I, I have yet to hear any other researcher describe some of my experiences or share those same similar, mm -hmm. I mean, their eyes turn, you know, inside mm -hmm. their head. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you that the, the, the experiences, the face-to-faces I have, their mouths always open, which I think mm -hmm. has to do with their, their, their breathing. Mm -hmm. um, people draw them and people, um, depict them as this stoic kind of look, but every mm -hmm. everyone I've seen has had their mouth open, and and the canines are always sitting here, mm -hmm. at the bottom. So, the brother, bottom. you're saying canines, C canines. We both know what canines are. We're, we know what they're for. God give those canines to to man and animal to to chew meat, and you know. That's basically what they're for. So uh, there are reports of uh, Tsunga uh, with... Sitonga. Uh, how is it? Sitonga. Sitonga. Yes. With, with, uh, with tusk, described as tusks. You know, uh, like, like wild boar. Um, I, I don't think elephant, but... Um, Nevertheless, not the not the typical square black teeth that, that we would picture, you know, or envision on pumpkins and stuff like that. So what is your feeling about that? Oh, it's. Uh... Yeah, Crazy Witch was talking about omnivores and incisors. That's the correct uh, medical term for the canines as we as we talk. So, so Val, can you repeat that again? I got somebody else talking to me. In there. Right, yes, uh, there are reports of uh, some Sasquatches with um, tusk, you know, uh, long teeth, like like wild boar, jettison from the jaw. Um, have you ever heard of that or encountered anything like that? No, I. I uh, again, Val, in 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 our in our discussions, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I, I have to say, and, and, and like you, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not like into dog man or any no, cryptids, no, but no. I, I can tell you that, no, I haven't. The only, the only thing I, I deal with and, and it, it's interesting Val, 11 years ago, I would have never probably confidently came out and said that I, I think that I have a relationship with them. I, I never wanted to believe that. I, I always kind of kept this maybe uh, uh, more humbler, you know, mm-hmm. uh, feeling about it. Mm-hmm. But after 15 years of active research now, I I can say that that the the relationship is solid. So going back to your question again, if you and Grizzly came out, mm-hmm. I have no doubt that that we have a very special place in my homeland. Mm-hmm. Uh, getting back to your question about the canine, um, you know, I, I haven't seen that, and I, I guess I'm not. I can't envision what you're mm-hmm. saying, mm-hmm. but but I have never seen the tusk. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I, I haven't seen that. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody from another uh, uh, forum that I belong to, uh, I believe she's Native American as well, and she she asked yesterday about, uh, have you ever tried to communicate with hand signals, with uh, hand signs, typical of people that are uh, hearing impaired? Um, so have you ever used hand signal to communicate with with uh, Sasquatch? If so, what were your, what were your experiences? You know, I, I think the only thing that, that I've learned and was told by, by, by some elders was to speak my native language. However, Val, I, I will say this, I saw something very interesting. Uh, it was on one of the coldest uh, nights in Nebraska history. I think it, well, I can't even remember, but I know the, the, the people on the radio and the news were saying that it was one of the coldest, coldest days, nights in the history. Um, I, we, we actually had a thermal out and we don't usually use equipment. Mm. And uh, one of our buddies came up from Omaha and we started to use it and, and we recorded, um, you know, maybe the the male. You know, I, I I couldn't I couldn't tell you male or female, but very uh, very big big sitonga with two juveniles off to the side. And if, if she was in the middle and the two were off to the side of her, um, as they started to get closer to us, maybe two hundred yards, I think they started to really recognize that we were actually our 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 group was actually in position and they, they had her lit up all right, on the thermal. And the, the actual arm movement um, we witnessed and it's just incredible. And I, I think we witnessed some of their their hand or, or body gestures or the way they communicate. Um, the, the male or the adult raised his hand over his head and brought it back down. And just like clockwork, if you can see me there, they, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm all, I can't do it. They came together right next to the, to the bigger, the bigger Sitonga. So that was clearly some body language kind of communication. So. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. Chris, do you have anything? For, for now, uh, I'm sitting here dumbfounded. Uh, <laughs> I have joined a lot of American uh, indigenous tribes, and they refuse to talk to me. Uh, so I'm like soaking all this in right now. This is like very blessful. Mm-hmm. So thank you. Yes. So have you had have you had any? Um, uh, any uh, bad experiences? Any negative experiences? Uh, <clears throat> Anything that would make you want to take a step back and say, "Whoa, wait a minute"? No, no, not not necessarily. Um, 
I think uh, my team members, they went out without me one time. And, and this was probably early on. Mm-hmm. And they used to do some things that, that were contrary to what we eventually uh, uh, started to uh, really understand, you know, based on keeping an open mind to this mm-hmm. approach. We didn't, we didn't obviously know everything going in how our people actually interacted until we started to dig deeper with some of the elders. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, my, my teammates have, um, Mm -hmm. they actually have an encounter where um, it, it, it it basically sounded like a horror movie. Mm -hmm. And, but honestly, I I can tell you that, that uh, based on, based on, uh, this this process in our approach, um, I I I have what you would call what I call these calm peaceful approaches, mm-hmm. and uh, I my and I, I know you said at the end you can give a shout out to your page, but if you if you're on my page, basically we tell the story on mm-hmm. risk watching research community. I I share everything that happens and and a lot of it based on that traditional spiritual approach um they're they're just incredible um again i there after 15 years you know i i think you know that million dollar question has been answered you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. i've heard people say before that uh, in my experience Barry, and and I I wasn't an expert going into this i'm not an expert now i never represent myself as an expert um, I was basically a show me, you have to show me something tangible uh, for me to believe. So in my experience, um, I had eye to eye contact and uh, it, there was no lips moving. We were thinking and it was just my thought that um, uh, this thing was this thing was staring through my soul, my friend, staring through my soul. Somebody, I think Janice Carter told me that, that uh, it was reading me. And if I, if I understand correctly, in some of the past conversations that we had, um, you go through some, some sort of uh, cleansing or something to get yourself, to get your mind, your heart right before before you you go out is that correct yeah yeah well usually that that's done during uh, our introduction you know mm-hmm. and, and a lot of that again came from you know my, my grandma shared some really deep insights into that and and I I think there is as I think back on that there is this you know, we don't want there. We don't want the outside world to come in and disturb that. Mm-hmm. So I have to admit that that's kind of the secret code, you know, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know how you white guys get. You know, you, you you're very curious and you tend to mess things up. Mm-hmm. And I say that because that's how we feel. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, it's not a. I don't want to say a stigma, but mm-hmm. that that's just it, it's very sacred to us. My the Omaha people, and I think all indigenous people hold. Situnga very uh, in high regard, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So, so would you would you confirm for me uh, that that uh, Janice Carter was correct? Was it reading me? Was it was it sensing who I was, what I was about? Well, let me let me. Uh, you know, I, I've heard of Janice Carter, and mm-hmm. and. The, the truth of that is they already know your heart before you before you even come out there. Really? Yeah. So that's kind of what we believe, you know. Um, they already know your heart and mind. So they already know if they're going to come and be curious, you know, even before you step out there. So they don't really have to take the time to, to read you. Um, mm-hmm. it, it was funny. I, I did this just kind of unconsciously or, or subconsciously um one of my relatives asked me to come eat down at the um our, our park where the cabins are and it was like, 
beautiful evening out. And as I got out of the car, I saw this group of six or seven people. And I hope I don't offend them, but uh, we were actually going to go out that night. They were going to go squatching with me. Mm -hmm. And so just by habit now, as I got out of the car, I stuck my arm out toward them. And I wasn't trying to cause a scene or anything, but I was hoping they didn't see me. But I stuck my arm out to feel their energy. Mm -hmm. And... And I, I've had some characters come with me, and mm -hmm. and that that don't happen anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that uh, it's not the good old boy, you know. Let, let's pick up Grizzly and let's pick up Val and let's go <laughs> squatching. <laughs> no, not, not no. the white boy approach. I, no. I say that, you know, respectfully. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it, it's something that, you know, I view is that we go pay our respects to our to our brother. Mm -hmm. and their family that that's that's what i was taught as a young boy mm -hmm. i i i probably used this as an analogy but i i probably knew uh and was fascinated with with Situnga before i even uh, knew about batman and robin in my day i, I remember mm -hmm. always wanting those figurines you know mm -hmm. so that was it, it, it was always uh interwoven within our culture you know that mm -hmm. that's the difference you know, mm -hmm. and I don't think the white world understands that, you know. Yeah. In a lot of respects. Uh, yeah. I, I think that that's that's lost on on a lot of people. It's 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 one thing to have oral history. It's another thing to have uh, paper and, and stuff in front of us that we we read and we set it aside. We forget about it or, or don't read it at all. But it's a very special thing to have an elder, as you say, or a grandpa, a great grandpa, or somebody here to, sh <clears throat> to share experiences uh, verbally. And, and that's very, very special to me. That's, and, and, you know, I can only imagine, um, I can only imagine it's, it's uh, incredible, very incredible. So, um, so, do you go out armed or anything, Barry? Anytime, are you armed? Uh, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. That is probably one of the biggest mistakes you can make. Um, I, uh, we, you know, this 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 quest. Let me call it a quest. I've always called it a journey, but this quest. To find the truth, you know, based on uh, God, basically. Um, mm -hmm. I think we found out a lot of things along the way while Grizzly and you are asleep, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, me and my group are out there, you know, and we're, uh, I, I really believe that, that a lot of my research is based on, you know, the patterns we, we see and we experience. And one of them is, is you know, I used to think, that it was cool to wear the camouflage, you know, to, to be a cool hunter, mm -hmm. hunter style. And that, to me, we realized that was a big turnoff to them. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, common sense told us that, you know, they know the hunters are out there dressed this way. Mm -hmm. so we, we've decided that, you know, let's put that away. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was, that made a, that made a big difference on on what we did, and I, I hope people are listening here, you know, because I, I think you could learn something about mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Grizzly. I, I see Grizzly's listening with real intent, and, mm -hmm. and I'm proud of Grizzly for doing that right now. Mm -hmm. Very good guy, very good guy. Yeah, I'm <clears throat> I'm very very intrigued about all this because I have so many unanswered questions. <laughs> I have reached out to many organizations, and unfortunately, uh, what you are saying is the fact uh, people do not want to speak to us because of what you just said, and that's the truth, and I'm finding that out the hard way. So, and a lot of questions that people always ask us is, what are these big X's represent that are formations? What does that tell us? Are you asking me that? Yeah. yeah, Barry. What what are those big X's mean up in the air across the ground? You know, let me let me 
let me share something with you, Grizzly. Um, one time I had a, at the time, it felt like a 20 minute encounter. And actually I, I and I shouldn't say this because then people will, will feel like, well, you should show us, you know. Um, one time I had a 20 minute encounter and, and actually it was 40. I had my niece and, and my cousin with me. And that was that was probably the most profound uh, encounter. And people, people, I take that back. What my my cousin said, Barry. He said, "Bro, he said this, this world ain't ain't ready for for what we have to share." And and I suppose, you know. I, I suppose I I should share this that that everybody has a story, right? I mean, Val, you could you could say, you know, I got Barry Webster on, but you know, why well, I, I shouldn't say that, Val. Let me let me get my thought clear here because everybody <laughs> Be <honest. laughs> everybody's got a story, right, Val? That's right, my friend. And, and Val Val could probably say, well, what makes Barry and them so special, Grizzly? Let, let, let's go up to Washington and. Uh, Let's grab, you know, this guy, you know, but the, 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 the truth be told. And, and if I could say something profound here to you, Grizzly, without mentioning the X, well, I take that back. I will try to describe that for you. Okay. Um, we have a, a, I have a teammate by the name of, uh, he's like a brother. He's a brother to me. Um, Richard Soul, who, who is a team member and and he is he is the expert on on the structures and and he has free access to our homelands and and we have done some remarkable research in this field that that eventually will come out you know um, I don't think we're in a hurry um, <clears throat> but but to me um, let me let me let me share an experience with you, Grizzly. During that 20 minute encounter, after I was questioning him, um, he walked away from me and he turned and he was very robotic as he turned and he walked away and he grunted and he <clears throat> made made that grunting noise. And then the juvenile came out and actually started like playing with us, walking and like almost in a wobbly kind of motion. And as we were witnessing this, filming it, it started to bark like a like a dog, like the neighbor dog that was nearby. And and I I turned back as as this juvenile had our attention, and I thought, where'd he go? And he was crouched down like a football coach does with his forearms on his legs. And he was under an X. So I, I, I don't want to take away from my brother Richard. And you guys should have him on next because mm -hmm. he could probably go more in depth. But to me, uh, Grizzly, that, that was like, to me, what I witnessed him when I saw him under that X and it, I didn't even know an X was there, but as our flashlight, as we turned the light on and he was under there, like, let me, let me see how you guys react to my, to my baby here. Mm -hmm. And I kept the light on him and, and he was just as calm as could be. And um, to me, as I reflected on that experience and what he was doing under that X was this was kind of their, their mark, but a, a, a symbol of a protection, a, a marking that said, you know, this is where I'm going to be during this time. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was a special marking for them. Grizzly, if that makes sense. Yes. Can I leave you with that? Yes. All right. Thank you. Yeah, that's exceptional. Mm hmm. So, yeah, I would like to have uh, Richard on at some point. That would be great. 
And when you and I were, were uh, chit-chatting the other day, uh, I was trying to remember the, the uh, paper that I read. I don't know if it's a book or a paper, but his name was one of those that escaped me. Um, and he mentions, by name, I think he mentions you and Res Squatching Research in that, in that paper. Very well written, very well done. Uh, I held on to it for a long time because some of the stuff that were in there was just, it was a treasure trove. You know, the information that, it, that he, uh, he and others had put together. So it was very good. One of the things that he touched on, I, I, if I remember correctly, was uh, not only the uh, stick structures, but uh, was uh, baiting and gifting and why you should not do that. Do you have any experiences with that, Barry? With gifting? Yeah, baiting. Uh, well, people were giving uh, uh, food and things to uh, Sasquatches. <clears throat> And they weren't happy with the with the results when when you stop gifting and they stop giving uh, peanut butter and stuff like that, or honey, whatever it was, you know, to to these things. You know, um, I, I I think for the most part, you know, I, I personally don't do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think when we started out. Um, that was again a show of respect, and and I don't. Again, I'm gonna go back to the question you asked me at the start, Val. Mm -hmm. um, they they know your heart. They 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 will show you when they're ready. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna shift gears on you guys because you're going too slow for me, Val. You know? <laughs> okay, all right, that's okay. I I was watching. Uh, uh, oh, she was an African American lady. Um, I, I, I guess after all these years, I, I'm I'm a spiritual person. You know, I'm not quoting scripture kind of guy. You know, mm -hmm. I, I believe everybody in their own time, on their own free will. You know, when they when they realize that there's a higher power out there, when they're brought to their knees, mm -hmm. that that's everybody has their own time. You know, when mm -hmm. they become closer and want to become closer to God. But I, I, I'll say this, that, that it is important to be connected to God. Mm -hmm. and, and somebody asked me a very, very uh, good question. He said, uh, Barry, what do you think? I take that back. It might have been a lady. And, and she said, Barry, what do you think they're trying to tell us? I said, well, she kind of stumped me a little bit. Then, then it was clear that that I I I think these are God's God's creation, obviously, and they're they're the the key is 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 prayer. You know, mm -hmm. I've had mm -hmm. some very profound uh, face to face encounters um, after praying with them. Uh, in fact, uh, Stevie Wonder. I think actually came and in his own way uh, wanted to pray with me. And uh, that, you know, that was just, you know, I, I, I think even today, you know, I'm, I'm going to challenge you and the, the Grizz there. You mm -hmm. know, you guys are man enough. Come to Nebraska and, and let's share in that experience, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's my challenge to you. Well, I'll tell you what. And the reason why we are being slow, we are treading on water carefully. We do not want to show disrespect. We, don't, we do not know what to ask, what is appropriate, what is not appropriate. But I do want to show you this video. And if you want to answer it, I would appreciate it. If not, just say no. Okay. Because we have caught something back in 2014 that has makes no sense to us. We know that they allegedly can do something. And here it comes, ladies and gentlemen. And it's not sharing. Why is that? Let me remove this screen. It's on my other screen. I don't know why it's not on my screen. Let me hit this button. 
Okay, here we go. Now, it should be like it's really running really slow for some reason. Hold on, once the pictures, there we go. Now, if you look right here and it all disappears, something cloaks itself. And it disappears. Let me bring it back up one more time. The question is, is can they or can they not cloak themselves, Barry? Are you, are you sure? It didn't come back are up, you did trying it? to show a video? Yeah, it's not coming up. Yeah, Chris. let me. Hold on. Let me, let me stop sharing. Let me. Let me present it one more time. Share screen. Share screen, share screen. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, one more time. Okay, it's up. All right, I see it. Now. In the center. If you see right here, something right there is cloaking itself. Now, they went back and they saw a flash of light. Right? And they went back and found footprints that were four inches deep. Foot that's closed itself. And for some reason, with Barry, it keeps wanting to shut itself off. He's see it? You see the? It's 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 like the movie Predator. Yeah, you know, um, Grizzly. You don't you don't see have on to that show side me. That vine. Yeah. I can I can answer that for you okay. if you want me to. Yes, I do. Go go ahead, you Barry. Don't mind. Okay, hang on. I'm just I'm trying turning to watch the video. The video. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of a hard. So yes. Now let me. Boy, um, not enough time. Hang on. Okay, can you answer that? It's Danny. Danny's calling. Libby. Okay, sorry about that. My daughter's no, you're calling fine. Facebook. Um, Oh, uh, I was in a, um, and I just told the story yesterday to uh, one of my nephews walking by as I was throwing horseshoes. He had uh, he he had some questions for me, and and he lives in in the hot spot. So him and I were were confirming some things, and I, I told him I said. Uh, you know, my nephew one time said, Uncle, he said, I, I heard you're going out. And he kind of thought he was a cop. He kind of thought that was a little weird, you know, for his uncle to be doing that. And I said, well, I just I have to find some things out. I said, and uh, we were sitting in his cop car. He finally agreed to take me for a ride. And he said, show me where you go, Uncle. And I thought, well, you know, that'll save me some gas. You know what I mean, Grizzly? <laughs> right. So we were we were sitting there. We just started talking, and um, out of out of nowhere, these loud footsteps. And out of all my face to face encounters, Grizzly, um, this what did I call him? I gave him a name too, but I, I I could hear it sounded like somebody coming. And there's a trailer to the right of us. And then there's a house toward diagonal, the back of us. There's an empty house to the left. And he's in the driver's seat. I'm in the passenger. And he, he said, um, hey, uncle, it sounds like somebody's coming. I said, well, good. I said, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's our, our grandpa. Maybe he's coming out. So I thought, well, that'd be cool. I haven't talked to him in a while. Then, then we didn't see anybody show up to the car to walk up to us and I, I could hear it. I, I started to hear like these these footsteps. 
and I thought, well, somebody's coming. And I, I looked around, I looked in the, the rear view mirror and I, I was twisting and turning. And all of a sudden my, my nephew, the cop, the cop, he, um, he went, Oh, his, his head went forward. And, and I looked at him and he said, damn, uncle, I got dizzy. And then I could hear like there was some movement. And then it must have came around, and I, I swear to God, Val, Val's looking at me here pretty seriously. <laughs> I'm listening with okay. the Okay, all right, all right. So then I actually felt like something was standing, like there was a presence next to my door. Mm -hmm. And we and we could feel that. Yeah, and and all of a sudden my head nodded off, and I, I, I felt like I got weak, and I said, Holy cow, I said, nephew, I, I got busy there. And he said, we, we just sat there for a while. Then it, it, it started to walk off and it walked eventually behind the trailer and it started kicking leaves. It was like in the fall, kind of misty. Mm -hmm. and it started kicking leaves like just really just like a whirlwind or something. And and I, we, we just sat there and listened and jumping, jumping ahead now, we went down by the lake and we started to do whoops. And this was, again, early on. Um, and then something about 60 yards started walking towards us and it just was going boom, 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 boom. And I'm talking 530 and in the afternoon around supper time and and we had the camera going we had a we had a camcorder going and i have the cd that will shock the world grizzly whatever and and i know what it was it was a seat on a cloak and he walked directly up to me and i swear he walked about a foot from me because the depressions in the grass were apparent and my, oh, brother filming this. my brother was filming this, and I could feel this really strong presence mm -hmm. right to my left side here. And my, my brother and, and my cousin were, were actually about 15 feet away just in awe of it. And I, I, I basically said, um, aho, I said, which means hello in my language. And I could feel this presence with my hair standing up, if you can imagine that now. And I said, aho, I said, um, I think you're a little too close. I said, if we offended you, I apologize. And understand anybody who's experienced that knows, knows probably what I was going through. And and I finally said, I would ask that you would back up, you know, out of respect. I said, and if you need us to leave, I said, we'll leave because we mean you no dis disrespect. So I think the big thing, even with the little resistance from the community, people thought we were going out doing the white guy thing, hitting on wood, you know, hollering, whooping, you know, carrying on. And granted, that was kind of my brother and my cousin's approach when we started. But after a while, it became apparent that that wasn't the way to go. So I literally asked for their forgiveness for, for, for whooping during that time. And I said, if you want us to leave, you know, um, let me know. And I could hear this now. Now, here's a question I may have answered for you. Have they spoke to me? Have they ever tried to speak to me? Here, here's what I heard. And it must have been, you know, maybe this high above me. I heard. Uh, did you guys hear that? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was my answer that you guys probably should leave. And I said, Aho, I said, uh, We'll leave. I motioned to my brother, we need to leave. And and then we we <clears throat> we walked out of there. But 
most definitely grizzly they 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 cloak and they they they're very stealthy they're they're blessed my people have a saying and see this is this is where i feel we get disrespected you know because the white man wants to prove it scientifically and that's okay i got nothing against science but my people have have said they're hubei my grandma told me that grandson she said i heard you're 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 looking for big sitonga and i and i i thought i was going to get my scolding you know but what she told me after that was probably the most breakthrough moment in in our squatching history and and she told me she said talk umaha to him she said pray with them and be humble when you go out there see how powerful is that grizzly very powerful versus mm -hmm. and i get it you know hollywood's hollywood you know but as natives we laughed and then we said no nah, that's not the way you do it you know i i don't think that he's in the business either of of <laughs> of going on TV, you know, and saying, hey, you know, yeah, I'm over here, you know. Mm -hmm. Right, so, right. So not to not to harp on Hollywood or anybody who's who's making that effort, you know, because it is it, it does make us curious. But I, I think the approach of respect and even after the little resistance, you know, uh, people think that I wanted fame and glory from this. That'll, that'll come. Let me say something profound to you, Grizzly. And one day you and Val can go back. That red squatching will probably change. Or let me re rephrase that. Red squatching will, will bring forth the truth someday. If that's profound enough for you, you're, oh, yeah. you're well thought out, and and yeah, it's. Believe me, we're listening. Okay, <laughs> we're we're listening. Uh, thank you, thank you, Val. We're um, listening. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I hope that that doesn't sound like I'm boasting, but no. I, I I think, I think the truth. The truth is here. Mm -hmm. And not to take anything away from anybody. Hey, keep searching, keep, you know, doing what you're doing out there, you know. But I, I, I think, I think the truth, res squatching. <laughs> so, so Barry, so you and your your cousin, um, if I understood correctly, you guys experienced Kube, infrasound. Is that correct? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And um, so, did you experience any other than what you told us here tonight? Did you experience any thoughts? You didn't see any lips moving. Um, so you know, you felt as though you were communicating with with this uh, individual, because I felt that. I felt that in thought, not the lips moving or anything. I felt that. You mentioned one thing that I thought was very, very important, and I'll say it right here. <clears throat> you mentioned the word free will. When, when, I, when I experienced my encounter, I felt like I was being drained of energy, like my energy was, was, was seeping away from me. And the only thing that snapped me out of that, I felt, was my thought of free will. You know, we're all given that gift of free will at, free will at birth. And it seemed to immediately relieve the situation, and I was ready to go. It was time to leave that, that place at that time. And for that, I always carried along the sense of great respect in that... Um, uh, I am a, you know, a student of, of strategy as a chess player, uh, as, as, a, uh, as a veteran, 
that's that's where my interests are is is thinking things out very cerebral and um i know that a lot of the best strategists in the world uh always say that that a, uh, a dangerous enemy is one that's cornered and can't move in chess it's the same thing to me that individual seen me i, I carried a weapon with me i always did <clears throat> when i was and you know that i was a uh, law enforcement officer um, so i always carried one with me and i know it's seen seen it strapped on my side but i had no intention in my heart it, in my heart, I had no intention of ill will or in, ill intent on anybody, anything, anywhere, anytime. That's not me. But um, I, I find it fascinating, extremely fascinating, uh, listening to, to some of the words that you share here with us tonight. And um, yeah, I have to believe that. I have to believe that there's a lot of credibility in, in what you share with us here tonight. It's great. Uh, you know, it's it's very very great. Oh, and I awesome! Hope, I hope that a lot of people listening here tonight take what you say to heart and think about it, mull it over, uh, and let it set in, and think about it. It's 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 incredible. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Yeah, you're welcome, Val. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it's been a pleasure, and I'm very thankful that, you, you know, you had the opportunity and, and time of your busy schedule to come on the show. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Greatly appreciate it. And you hear the applause cla <laughs> clapping for you, Barry. It's very good. It's very, it's very good, my friend. Yeah. I, I, you know, with all love, with all respect, I, I, um, I admire you, and I admire the work that you've done. And um, I hope, here's what I hope, Barry. I hope, brother, that you come back on and join us again very soon. And, and we can sit back and chit-chat some more, maybe uh, step a little further into this and, and cover areas that we hadn't, we hadn't journeyed before. You bet. You bet. Um, let me, I, I know we got off. Um, one of the things I want to mention is, uh, we just finished a documentary on, uh, I actually, I think it's, uh, well, it's on Amazon Prime, um, Situnga, Bigfoot, uh, Spirits and Faith. Uh, that's, we just got done while well, they just put it on Amazon Prime. So if you want to see, um, yeah, you're welcome, Jeremiah Sutton. Well, I really appreciate your crowd. That, that's neat. I like how people's thoughts come up like that. Mm -hmm. Uh but Amazon Prime, um, you also can, to get a deeper insight, um, to really um, uh, get a feel, uh, our pages is, is, I want to thank all, all my membership for their support. I know they like to follow me. Um, so if somehow this could be shared to my page and they could rewatch it, I know they would appreciate that. Um, you're, thank you, Norma. Boy, that's a good crowd. I like that, Val. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll uh, definitely give you the link. Absolutely, yes. Yes, we'll share the link and everything. And yeah. next time you come on the show, uh, we'll show you how to automatically stream to two live, live locations at the same time while you're on the show to your group free of charge. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that'd, be, that'd be good for you, Barry. Yeah. Yes. Also, you... Uh, I don't know if they they took it down, but we I did some work with Kerry Arnold a few years ago. Oh, yeah. You'll have to watch that one, uh, mm -hmm. Bigfoot Odyssey. Uh, again, um, rest in peace, Kerry Arnold. Um, but you'll have to watch that one. Um, mm -hmm. He, we we talked about uh, when I shook hands with one, mm -hmm. and so he he did a in-depth documentary on that actually he came to the res and did the documentary so that that's a good one um i actually um i i had a juvenile come up to me about four feet you bet you lady wolf you bet you thank you thanks for having me but uh, i actually if i if i would have reached my arms out grizzly check this out i was talking to four of them in front of me and this juvenile was coming down 
this branch ended up being four feet from me sitting on the branch. And if I would have turned and I had two members there who, who would gladly come on this show and tell you the same story. In other words, I, I've had people say, Barry, you know, you're the feel good story of the Bigfoot world. And that's very flattering to me, you know, because 15 years later, I, I, I kind of <laughs> I kind of actually am saying, I think so. You know, maybe so. Mm -hmm. and, and so I don't I didn't come on here to brag. I, I just tell it like it is, you know, and again. This quest is is. Uh, uh, I'll finish with this, you know, um, I could walk away from this thing, Grizzly, and you'd never hear from me, you know, because I think my my quest is done. You know, I set out to find the truth and and don't take this the wrong way, but I think everybody else is chasing their tail. And there'll be a day when you'll say, hey, I had that guy on my show, Grizzly. <laughs> well, I believe it. it. Well, I God, believe it. The truth, mm -hmm. brother. Mm -hmm. I believe it. Absolutely. Right on, Grizzly. Yeah. I believe it, sir. Absolutely. Right on. Hey, guys, I, I don't know if that's my time or that's my cue, but hey, I, I appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, oh, it's been a pleasure, sir. Thank you. Thank you once much again. Much blessings, Barry. Much blessings. Thank you, Tammy Johnson. Tammy, um, also, all of you, if you want to know more about um, Red Squatching Research, mm -hmm. I, I post every outing, every um, uh, camp out, I, I share. I, I think you could learn something from our page, Tammy. Um, mm -hmm. So Red Squatching Research Community. It's a private page. We're growing like crazy. Um, come on over. We'd love to have you. Lady mm -hmm. Wolf. Man, what what a what a nice page, Val. Thanks, mm -hmm. thanks for having me, man. You and Grizz. Absolutely, Zay. It's been a pleasure, man. Thank you you're, so much, sir. You're always a brother, my friend. In the Absolutely. And we'll, we'll, and Val will get you that link, sir. Right on, right on, guys. Hey, God bless. God take bless care. you and take care. All right. We'll see Thank you, my friend. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be wow. right back right after this. Stand what a by. show. Yes. It's a grizzly. Should we get out of here? No. We're gonna watch and listen. Wow, man, I tell you. That's, that Chris, that's gotta be the best show. That, that I've ever participated in. It's, it's, uh, it floors me uh, to listen to this man talk. It really does. Unbelievable. Um, wonderful. But I don't you know, know what to ask. Yeah. Uh, on a side note, I, I, I hope that Jeremiah stops back again because he touched on a, <clears throat> he touched on a few things. I got it all set up. So we're ready for the next show. Okay. See, I got my wire soaked up. Great. Super. Yeah, because I've, I'd like to, to talk on to those three points that he mentioned. The abandoned buildings, the serial killer, that kind of stuff. Right, right. Very, very interesting stuff. So, yeah, it's been a great, great show, Chris. Wow. Unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. Still spinning on that. I, I just don't know what to say, you know. I just uh, had me on I was, the edge I, was, of I was afraid to ask questions because I didn't know what he was allowed and not to allowed or what he wanted to say and what not to say. So, you know, I don't want to be disrespectful or anything, no, or anything no. like Barry, that. So. Barry is pretty, 
Barry is pretty easygoing, but he's also the type of person that speaks his mind and he does it eloquently. Uh, he does it with passion. He does it with love and respect and stuff. So, <clears throat> yeah, he's <clears throat> he's a very, 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 very good guest. And quite frankly, uh, he's in demand. There's a lot of people out there that want his time. And uh, yeah, I was. Yeah, I wonder why. Yeah, very honored to have him here. I'm still spinning about that. <clears throat> Hey, we know beyond a reasonable doubt it cloaks. It does. We know. You remember he you even asked said me last it. week about this, and I says, "Well, I don't know. I, you know, you asked me what I thought about it. I don't know, but after listening to him tonight, there's a lot of things we don't know. There's a lot of things that we find hard to grasp. So, yeah." Wow. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, from coast to coast and around the world, this is Grizzly and Gumshoe Val, man. Let's rock it on until next week. Peace. What are we going to have next week, man? Something interesting, right? Well, we'll work on something real nice. We'll leave that a that, surprise. That's a hard one to top, man. That's is, a hard it one. It is. It's, it's uh, you know... You know, really, if you look at this, Barry is Barry is the doorway to a lot of a lot of people. Really, there's a lot of people that know him. There's a lot of people that respect him. He knows a lot of people. Barry, he's a good person to know. So, and I've I've just yeah. enjoyed chit chatting with him all the time. I mean, I I go to him with questions and you know it's it's a mutual back and forth thing for hours as you can see we chit that kick it back and forth we have some good all right but yep have- all right ladies and gentlemen we're out like he said love you all we'll see you next week take care thank you Chris. God thank bless. you everybody we'll good see night. you bye-bye <laughs>